Hey, this is the Balzers HLT160 dry helium leak detector. And it's using a, uh, inside in, in the box here, I have it covered up right now, but it's a, using an Edwards ESDP30 dry scroll pump. Hey, this is a, uh, the utilities for this is just a 110 outlet, and 20 amp plug. Uh, turn the main power switch on here, and then we'll hit the uh, green here. That's our drive pump, scroll pump, start it up. And then what we'll do here is we'll hit the uh, power on button to the uh, helium leak detector. And it's going to go through an initialization. It'll take a few minutes. You can see it's in our initial one. We'll go up to three and then it'll be ready to use it. Okay, while we're waiting for this to initialize, you can see I have, this is port 1 here, I have it blanked off with a KF25 uh, blank off. This would be port 2, if you decide to use that. And it also has the capability of using a, uh, a sniffer, but that's an option that needs to be added on. It's explained in the manual that you'll receive. Uh, this is your remote control unit. So this will pull out. And this also has a, uh, a plug to, to uh, let's put an option for uh, a headphone. So. I'm just going to slide back in here for now. I do have a standard here that we have got calibrated and uh, to the depletion rate as of September of last year at 7.8 times 10 to the minus 8. Now I use this to calibrate our internal leak. There is a leak inside, but that too also depletes over time. And if you look up top here, you can see that the uh, internal calibrated leak has been set to 4.9 to the minus 8 millibar liters per second. So right now we're looking at the uh, background uh, indicator here for your spectrometer too. And just quickly I'll go through here just to explain. This is explained in a manual as much uh, is explained pretty well. So uh, we do have these overlays and what they do here is they'll put an overlay. For instance, say you wanted to uh, change, uh, do some service or change your user parameters, as I had to have done to uh, change the helium uh, internal leak parameter. What you would do here is hit enter, and hit the right arrow, and you can see the overlay is active. And by hitting user parameters, we'll just step through and we'll look at uh, what would be here, Cal Sniff, or responses in standard, and here's our TL internal, that's our internal leak value, and as you can see it's set to 4.9 e to the minus 8. Other user parameters are the main, so this is a, we set this to 60 hertz, you can set either 50 or 60, depending on your uh, frequency of your power coming in. I have the background uh, subtraction off. As you can see, the user is in this column here, if you're doing service, it would be in here. So you can set your PV1, PV2, and PV4 values. Again, this is all explained in the manual. I just want to show you how to use it. And then here's our service. That's your P2 value. Which are your Piranis, internal Piranis. P1. This is speed, your rotation. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, hours. So anyway, to get out of this, then what you would do is hit enter and then reset, and you'd be back to where we were initially. And then you do have one here too where you can control different valves. Again, this is explained in the manual. So what we can do here is we'll step through real quick and just do a calibration with our internal leak. And to do that, uh, we need to be vented, which we are. We're in vent mode. We're going to hit calibrate, and as you can see, the TL internal is flashing. We're going to accept that. And 
just asking if the port is closed, which it is, I have a blank off on it. And we'll just go ahead and uh, hit enter. So it's going to take a minute or two. It's going to go through an internal uh, leak calibration and we'll calibrate your system for you. And we'll come back. It's going to read back a uh, calibration factor number and we'll look at that and then we'll continue on it. We'll, we'll check it against our calibrated leak here, our uh, external calibrated leak. Alright, so we got a calibration factor of 1.7. The lower the number, the better. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and hit enter on that. So what I'm going to do is I'll put our uh, external calibrated leak on here. And you, there's an O-ring such as this. It's a KF25 quick flange. We'll leave this open here. See, this is our background here. As the Cathy Bridge, you'll call on line one. Cathy Bridge, you'll call on line one. Cathy, line one. This is your helium background that you're seeing in the spectrometer tube, and as this the uh, detector runs for a while. You'll see that number will come down pretty low to the low, low to the minus 10 range. So what we'll do here is we'll just hit pump and we'll go ahead and see that our numbers match here. Okay, so we're getting a reading of 7.9 to the minus 8 and then we can close this off. Covering from the helium that the helium leak that it just sensed in the spec tube. I'm going to go ahead and open it up real quick. And here we are. So now that we know that the helium leak detector is calibrated, so we can go ahead and start leak testing. What I'm going to do here now, though, is I'm going to show you how to operate uh, the hand. Uh, the hand with the line through it means it's. Uh, hands-free or in automatic uh, ranging mode and you can adjust it down for instance here as long as you're not auto range it won't let me go into 10 because it's right at 10 here now you can see in auto mode it'll find the correct uh, I can bring that down there we are there's our 8 range alright so that's our auto mode now what we can do here is we can uh, go to manual. We'll do a uh, zero on the background here by hitting this. Down arrow. And at this point our volume will then be uh, enabled, our speaker. two seconds you can adjust the volume level you can barely hear it now I'm going to bring it up a lot louder so I'll put it up to full and we'll just go ahead and open and close our external leak the vent button. That'll vent port one for you. And you'll have to take off your leak. 